This is another episode of Drawing Characters from Random Shapes. Today's theme is space. I note that these shapes are not actually random. I'm in control of the shapes that I'm drawing, which is regrettable. I still have ideas for coming up with truly random shapes to work with, but the upside to this is that I can actually make the shapes intentionally difficult to work with by making shapes that are unpleasant to try to shape into a character, but that's the whole point of the video. This first guy is going to be called uh, Guillermo Hopman. Hopman is of course a very common surname out in outer space because people would take on the last name of the place they spent the most time, which was often an IHOP restaurant in a space station or orbital asteroid or Mars outpost. IHOPs during the expansion of human space age, well, it was insane. It was worse than Starbucks. But because they couldn't kick you out into space legally because you would die, then uh, a lot of people who couldn't otherwise find housing ended up living in them. And uh, Hopman became a very common last name. Hopman, uh, Guillermo here, is actually the son of the founder of IHOP. Uh, who had an artificial life extension installed inside of his brain, and uh, he's estranged. He's estranged from his family. That's why he's in this cool team of space adventurer mercenaries that is going to be drawn. This next character, well, you see the shape, and obviously you're going to think, well, that would be pretty easy to turn into a snail or a crab, and you'd be exactly right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the easy way out and make it into a crab. A lot like the crab monsters from the video game Secret of Mana. But uh, I think that there should be at least some twist to a crab, especially one derived from such an obvious choice for the shape. I, I need something that will really make this shine. I. I remembered I did some illustration work for a friend and she was very happy that I had inserted a random chainsaw into the drawing so I think I'll just do the same thing here. I think chainsaws are testing well. I might include more chainsaws in future drawings. I think that people are really gonna like it. Anyway, this guy's name is Chainsaw Crab. Yeah, I, I, uh, I really set myself up with this one, huh? I guess I could turn it into a... Uh, Thanksgiving turkey, or uh, a big hand, or uh, some kind of starfish guy. Instead, of, he's going to be like a dinosaur guy in a spacesuit, and his uh, the big plates. You know, like what's that dinosaur with the plates? Stegosaurus. He's got some of those, but they're like gross and weird because I drew it, and uh, his spacesuit is airtight around those so that they actually protrude out of the suit and uh, I'm gonna have a really hard time, you know, putting some legs on this dude. I'm gonna have to, I I'm gonna end up doing some, some fudging on this just to make this work. But I, I don't think I, I took it too far. I think it still stays true to the original difficult shape. And if you think I'm a coward and I took the easy way out, then uh, leave your hateful comment in the comments below. Oh, anyway, this guy, I guess he needs a name. It's gotta be like, uh, Stego man, Hop man, uh, let's just call him Jerry Bruckheimer. Now, this shape, what it says to me is not exactly that it's a character, you know, strictly speaking, a character, but often, you know, a piece of equipment or, or a, a non person can be a character for a cast. So, I think this really says to me that it's some kind of like Vespa or. Some kind of mode of transport, like a like a little motor scooter or something, but obviously it's in space, so it flies. It's a little beat up. I think a good idea for this character would be that, you know, like maybe it's like a, a talking robot car like we've seen in other media, or or probably even better that it people constantly interact with it as if it is a talking vehicle with sentience, but it is not. It's just a it's just a flying motor scooter that you could get for, you know, you know, a good used one for about 1500 equivalent. Of course, this is in space in the future, so inflation's going to be insane, probably like 15 grand for this. 
but I mean, if you were using today's style money, uh, you know, like 1500, you know, go like a really premium uh, used one for like 18, 1800, pretty good deal. I got a, it's not new, you know, how, it probably costs 22 new. I mean, you're saving a lot of money. I'm trying to get you a deal. Look, if you don't get me, if you don't buy this, you just waste them both of our times. Both of our times are being wasted. Oh, you don't like that sales pitch. You think it's too aggressive. Okay, well, I'm the salesman. I don't come down to your space motor scooter store, which you don't have, and tell you how to not sell me a motor scooter because I don't need one because I make enough money to drive a space car. Yeah, I know space cars are illegal. All right, look, we're gonna go to the next character. Uh, I think I write the name on this one. It's called uh, the Vast Bar 3350. Look, it's a good deal. Just take, just take the deal. Okay, I'll go down to 14. I go down to 14 for it. Oh, look at this unfortunate shape. Wouldn't it be just a shame if this shape was a human, uh, a very long human? Wouldn't that just be awful? Oh, wouldn't that be terrible? Who would, who would draw such a character? This, it would be unconscionable to turn this into some sort of banana man, some kind of a person who is shaped like a banana and has a smug little face inside of his tiny porthole space suit. He's just always so happy flying around in his little jetpack. God, it would be awful if that's what this shape turned into. Thankfully, that doesn't happen. This is just a cloud formation that happens to look like a guy named Banana Man, and he's part of the crew. All right, that's the team. This is the team for 3019. It rhymes, so you know it's legal. Now it's time to slather some color on there. I'm gonna use some uh, bucket fill tools because I'm using Krita now, which has really excellent coloring tools. Although I still really hate the text tools that Krita uses, even though it's very fully featured. It has so many features that it would actually be hard to make it, you know, fast, like GIMP's text tool, because the customization options are very much what makes it good, but it's not fast. It also doesn't have, like, a live update. Look, I'm, I'm talking about Krita. It's got good... Uh, I, I think this might be more entertaining to watch people color, you know? Uh, I still have to do some, you know, manually filling in with the brush tool underneath. I try to draw a few, you know, sort of occult slash technical markings on Chainsaw Crab, so he's got a little bit more flavor. What kind of crazy adventures could these guys have? They could, I don't know, pick up garbage on the side of the space road, you know, turn that in for space bucks, and then go to IHOP and get some food. Uh, maybe there's some kind of dangerous mission they could do. Almost certainly a suicide mission. Making them some kind of killing themselves squad in space. I guess they really only have the one vehicle between them. I mean, Manana Man and I have already firmly established I would never draw a character such as Banana Man and his jetpack doesn't count because he's not real. Banana Man, he can't he can't get to me, he's not he's not gonna come after me. Banana Man's not real, he's not gonna come after you. Uh, Banana Man is not looking in through your window at nighttime. Banana Man is not behind you. Banana Man is not He's nowhere. He doesn't exist. That's a cloud formation. I would say that probably this team's biggest, uh, biggest accomplishments are gonna be, uh, you know, running from Banana Man, uh, not being killed by Banana Man, uh, not having Banana Man snap their necks or eviscerate them in a bathroom or some other, you know, 
private and extremely vulnerable position. I I think that this, these guys probably spend 80% of their time running from Banana Man doing whatever odd jobs they can so as not to be murdered. And really isn't that the most important lesson to teach to your readers or viewers? Not to let Banana Man get you. <laughs>